Few songwriters have been able to write as many extremely catchy riffs and melodies with simple ideas as John Fogarty. Now that's what I'm gonna share with you today and also the connection between blues and rock in this Bad Moon Rising guitar lesson. So let's get straight into it. I'm gonna show you the opening part, basically note for note, and then I'm gonna show you some easier ways of playing it as well. So the first part sounds like this. Three, four. So there's only three chords you need to know in this song. We've got a D, which is from the fourth string down, open, two, three, two. An A, which I play with one finger here, open A string, second fret, second fret, second fret, and then I mute the first string and also the low E. And then G, which looks like your typical, you know, four finger G chord here. Three, two, open, open, three, three. But I often play this without the index finger here. So those are the chords, D, A, and G. Now, if you want an easier version, I would use these open chords, okay? Now, if you can, you also want to play them as bar chords. So there's sort of two lessons you could do here. You could do the bar chord version or you could do the open version. With the bar chord version, we're going to have the fifth fret of the A string, the seventh fret on the D string, and also on the G and B strings there. And then we'll go to A like this, all six strings, five, seven, seven, six, five, five, and then drop that down two frets to a G chord, three, five, five, four, three, three, and then those are gonna be the chords there. So D, A, G, or D, A, G. Now to start off, we're gonna use the bar chords. And again, if this is too hard, you could play the open chords, but the bar chords really sound just like the recording here. Okay, so that's the D bar chord there. We're gonna go down, down, up, down. Then we're gonna go to the A chord, and we'll play sort of the bass strings, then the treble strings. Then do the same thing on the G chord, and then go to open D. So it's gonna go. Now the groove with this song is a 16th note feel, but the 16th notes are swung. So a 16th note is basically where we take one beat and we split it into four parts. We can count it like this. One and, two and, three and, four and, ba 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 da ba 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 one and, two and, three and, four and. So we're gonna go one and, two and, ba 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 ba, ba then three and, four and, okay? to this D, this is where you can really kind of see the blues influence here. And this is almost like a blues rhythm pattern. What we're going to do is we're going to play the D chord twice. One and, then two, E and, uh, we're going to have this little riff off of the D chord. So what I'm doing there is using my pinky to grab the fourth fret on this third string. So. Just alternating back and forth. One and two E and a three E and a four E and a ba ba. So that adds a nice little melody on the D chord. Again, if that's too hard getting the pinky, it is tricky to get your pinky to do that, but that's gonna sound just like the recording. So all together. So that's the intro. And again, you could see that connection to the blues. Now, if you like this style of guitar playing blues and rock, I wanna give you something that's really gonna help you out. And what it is, is my free blues scale PDF guide. And this is gonna show you the five easiest and fastest ways to start playing the blues scale up and down the neck. So you can do it in any key, you can play solos, and you can jam along with your favorite songs. Just go to johnmcclennan.com slash blues scale 
sales. Or you can click the first link down below, made it easy for you, and grab that as my gift to you. All right, so coming out of that intro, we've got Then what we do is we start the same progression again, but here I'm just gonna keep it as open chords, okay? So this would be an easier version. Instead of doing the bar chords, you could also play it like this. So this is the verse groove here. We're gonna start on the D chord. One and two, E and uh. So that's down, down, up, down, up. Ba, 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 ba. Then we'll go to the A chord and we'll go three and four and. And here I'm just using those open shapes, okay? Now the reason why I do just the one finger is because the chords are changing so quickly, you know? I, I don't wanna have to set up all my fingers and take a lot of time. I just wanna sort of grab it with one finger and then get on to the next chord, so. Now here you could play stay on D or if you want to add that little that little riff in there it's nice because the melody is like right the I see the dead of the room rising notice how the guitar lick comes right in the gap of the vocal. And this is actually a super important lesson. You know, if you're playing behind a singer, you don't wanna play all this busy stuff while they're singing. They're gonna look at you and be like, stop getting in the way, okay? But the best players know how to like dance right in between, you know, when the vocal's singing and then they come in. So this is an example of that, like da 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 guitar. And if that wasn't being played there, then there would just be like a little, you know, we'd just be hearing the D chord and it would be cool. But again, you know, in music, you always want to keep this excitement happening and, and the melody like flowing and the energy of the music moving along. So that's our verse groove. Da, 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 da. Now we go to the chorus. Okay, so in the chorus here, I actually take a different approach with the strumming pattern, and I just play eighth notes. So we're gonna go to the G chord. The chorus starts on G. We're gonna go G, D, one bar each, then A, G, one bar, and then D. So it's just a four bar chorus there. Now for the first two bars here, I'm just going one and two and three and four and. It's a whole measure on G and I'm just playing sort of like bass, treble, bass, treble, bass, treble, bass, treble, bass, treble. Then go to the D chord, do the same thing. Then here we'll split up the measure, A, two beats, G, two beats. And then in the last bar, which is D, I'll do the, the main groove, which is and do that little riff that we did in the verse. So all together, the chorus goes riff. Again, there's that riff coming in right after the vocal finished. So see see how this works? I mean, I'm not making this stuff up. You're gonna see this in countless hit songs, and these are things that you wanna pick up that are gonna help you build your musicianship, and also when you go out and play with other people, they're gonna, you know, if you work with a singer, they're gonna be like, oh, we love the sound of that. So the last part I wanna tell you about is the ending, okay? So we come out of the chorus. Dun. how it ends. It ends on beat three. We just go one and two and three on the D chord. 
So there it is, Bad Moon Rising. You've got a blend of the bar chords and the open chords. Again, if you want that note for note sound, try for the bar chords, but they are harder. So if that's too hard and you can't get it right now, you can work up to it, don't worry. Start with the open chords. But I would say you'd wanna know how to do both. And again, see that connection to the blues, right? A lot of CCR's music, come straight out of the blues. So to help you more with this, grab my free blue scale PDF guide. Just go to johnmcclennan.com slash blue scales. You can grab that as my gift to you. As always, thanks for watching and for more CCR, check out this video next.